What is up guys, this video is going to be about error handling uh, in Golang, especially from uh, APIs. So it's a discussion that's basically ongoing for quite a while. Um, like how do we need to actually return errors? Do handlers actually need to return errors in the first place? I think it does and uh, this is the reason why. So I am building this new service for uh, my company 11U and uh, for the people that are interested, I'm building the service completely live recorded uh, on the total coder, right? So if you want to know how a million dollar company is getting, multi-million dollar company is getting built, you can check the total coder, all the videos are there, right? Uh, so basically, we have this handle create customer, right? And um, so what's happening, basically, we have a create customer request. This is very beginning code, right? This is not uh, the complete service already. I'm just building this right now. So uh, hey, give me some credits. Uh, so we have this create customer request. We are going to basically decode um, the create customer request uh, from uh, the response body, right? So what can happen here, uh, basically, if you decode that stuff? Well, uh, a couple things can happen, right? If, 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 it, if people post invalid JSON, you basically need to handle that, right? And you need to return a decent error message, right? But what can also happen is that this request, if you validate this, uh, it can be that um, yeah, that some fields of that request are basically invalid. Some people forgot to uh, provide a value for a field. Maybe the field is too short, maybe it's too long, or whatever, right? So you need to handle that. And I see people um, do nasty stuff in their handlers, and it's very hard to debug, and it's not a pleasure to read. So um, Golang's errors is basically an interface so you can do whatever you want with that right and you, you can see what's happening here so for example uh if there is a bad json if it's a malformed json i just return invalid json and how does it actually work first of all let me actually show you here uh, is this running yes it is let me show you this so for example if i post to customer with no json at all boom you're gonna see that we have this beautiful, let me zoom in a little bit more. Uh, you're gonna see that we have a status code 400, right? It's a bad request. And we have a message here, which is invalid JSON request data. Just like that, could be another message, doesn't really matter, right? Uh, but if I actually provide some values, for example, I'm gonna say name, and let's do some one letter, which basically is invalid, right? It will not um, pass the validate request method. So if I send that, boom, you're going to see that we have a status unprocessable entity. And the reason why I do this is because you can see that we have, uh, instead of an, a single string message, we have an object, right? So now the front end can see, okay, it's an unprocessable entity. That basically means that we're going to have um, an object passed into this message. Why? Because let's say a, uh, a customer has a name, an email, and a lot of other fields. Uh, you don't want to return, hey, the name is invalid because then he's going to, the user is going to update his name, he's going to send again, he's going to get another error. Yo, your email is invalid. You want to basically validate your object and return all the errors at once so the front end can uh, notify the user that he needs to update all these fields. For example, of course, you're going to have some front end validation, but you also need to have a good back end validation. That's very important as well. So you can see that uh, this completely changes, right? Unprocessable entity. And if we check our code here, there is no special logic handling that. It's just this function. And even if we go look into this function here, for example, uh, let's take a look at invalid JSON, right? So it all starts, I'm going to zoom a little bit out here. So it all starts with an API error structure, right? It's going to have a status code and it's going to have a message, right? Then we have this beautiful uh, interface method, which is basically needed because otherwise this API error um, cannot be uh, passed as an error because it does not implement the error uh, method, right? So this is a new API error. This is a generic uh, simple function that basically constructs a new API error. But the cool stuff is that we have this, for example, invalid request data, right? And an invalid request data is going to uh, receive a map uh, of string string which is basically going to be the key and the actual error message. For example, name, name is too short. Email, invalid email. Address, invalid address, something like that, right? Uh, so you can see that we return this like that. Invalid JSON, just the same thing, but different, right? In this case, we return a new API error. So we take this function, 
you see we i'm actually constructing composing all these things together right it's just an a status batch request and we're going to return this error invalid json request data right and of course this is not final but i'm just willing to show you that you can do a lot of stuff with these errors making it just very easy to read in your handlers and you need to write less code uh, to just have the same effect so the question rather is how is this error being handled where is the magic happening well that's basically in uh, this thing right this make is basically a wrapper function it's a higher order function it's a decorated function whatever you want to call that and we are going to do a little check here right we're going to pause in this handler which is basically our uh, api func which is our representation of the handler right it's this signature right and it's going to return an http handler func which is golang standard library representation of a handler okay so we're going to check here we're going to we're going to uh, get the error and we're going to check if this is an api error we are going to write that as json exactly how we have set that uh, error up at the at the at the above here right above boom just like that we're going to write this json thing out okay but if it's basically not an uh, api error we are going to return an internal server error right so if it's an api error we're going to return the representation of that api error which is our own custom error if it's not of the type api error we know it's just as it's going to be an error returned without not our error the standard calling error we're just going to return an internal server error why is that well let's say so uh you're gonna see this code here right let me see here for example this is a customer right and this account id is basically a, a foreign key to uh, a reference to the account table in the database at this point in time there is no account in the database so what basically gonna happen is that this is going to give us an sql error like hey uh you're trying to reference account that basically does not exist right that's why we why we use sql to get this type safety right we do not want to return that to the user we want to log that internally but we do not want to return that to the user at all because that's basically security wise could be a problem because yeah do not do that at all right so let me show you here right so for example i'm going to give a good name um let's say it's going to be uh, i don't know foo bar pass or something right so this is a valid data i'm going to post that boom and you see it's going to be and let me zoom in again it's going to be an internal server error that is 500 we don't want to have anything uh returned to the users over the net but if we see here this is going to make a nice lock in our backend application so we can actually see what's going on in our logs right so that's basically how this is getting handled right and it's nothing more to that so let me know what you think about that a lot of people are still a little bit skeptical about returning errors in your handlers uh, but i think it's just a very good way to do that a very handy way uh, to uh, construct your applications right especially if you can return your own custom errors let me know what you think about that and if you're interested in these kind of videos check out uh, the total coder in the link down below don't forget to subscribe to the channel and i see you in the next video. Bye-bye.